So, we're back up to the ranch house. Prickly pear. Prickly pear is one of the most common cacti and is found in 47 of the lower 48 states. The flat, fleshy pads store moisture, produces yellow flowers and juicy red to purple pear-shaped fruit. With spines removed, prickly pear pads are edible as it's a fruit from which delicious preserves are made. Animals also eat prickly pear fruit. Burrows kick them off the plant, then roll them onto the ground to remove the spines. Hmm. I don't see any blooms on them right now. On the street. Uh, there's some that looks like back by the fence back in there. Mm -hmm. There's the cows. They're out this morning. There is the main ranch house. Here's the front of the main ranch house. Park actually, it opens at 8, but apparently can't get into the buildings until 10. Some old farm equipment, it looks like. Sign says, Ranch Agricultural Implements. On January 31st, 1876, James B. Wilson filed on 160 acres at the foot of Sand Mountain and on all water rights for stock and other purposes. The Wilson Sandstone Ranch under the Flying Five brand had up to 400 head of cattle with some fruits, grains, and vegetables grown to supply the miners at the nearby mines of Ivanpah, Potosi, and El Dorado Canyon. The ranch was irrigated with systems of banked ditches and head gates across fields and horse-drawn agricultural implements were used to cultivate crops and harvest for feeding cattle through the winter. Subsequent owners learned the difficulties of ranching in the Nevada desert and developed abilities and technical skills in the yearly cycle of irrigation and harvest of hay and grains. Innovative implements and tools made it faster, easier to operate, and above all, decreased labor requirements to carry out agricultural processes. The items on display here were instrumental in the operation of this ranch throughout its half or throughout its century and uh, half history. gas pump back there.
This is a ranger station there. We just found out that we can't go into any of these buildings down here because they don't have enough staff to run them, unfortunately. But we'll still take a tour of the outsides of them. I think this one over here is the sandstone over on the left. This one's a blacksmith shop. Yep. Well, this one here is a blacksmith shop. Have to come back sometime when you got more staff and can tour them. So I guess they're pretty neat inside. When you look at the website. Awesome. Show you around. So that's actually back down. Um, it's right in front of the district center. We're trying to rebuild that old So yeah, yeah. So we've got um, two pomegranate trees that I actually grow up there. Um, yeah, she kind of stuff. Yeah, she, um, she she tended her horses and everything. Like she, she was an active girl. <laughs> you know, she was a good farmer. Um, she, did very, she did a lot of good stuff, even though she was a rich girl. You know, she did. She did it all. But, um, yeah, um, over here is uh, where the Wilsons originally settled. Um, so that, that house on the right side was the original one on the property. That was built in 1870. We'll walk up there, but basically that's the house. And on the left side is the two house. So um, that's where the church is there and everything. And black was black painted. Armed wire of Nevada is what this board says right here. So it's Bunch of horseshoes up there. We haven't been able to clean it in a while. Uh, right now, we don't have a plan. The old lanterns up here. Yeah. 
Up here is the Wilson house. Here's that water trove. Yeah, maybe, maybe. This is the original homestead. Can't go in it right now, but what it looks like on the outside. We just shoot them off, and you know, we don't want to. We don't mess with them, and we try to. Well, you don't mess with them, but then, you know, three days later, they come back and there's a person standing there, and it's like the little kid, and... No, we, we haven't really had any, any problems with the rattlesnakes, actually. We've never really had any anyone get hurt, thankfully, right? Because you can bring your dog in there, can you? Yeah. Yeah, state parks allow dogs to come in. It's something that happens. We'll do the Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we have... <laughs> What other spiders? Oh, I, I think so. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't really. They all look pretty similar. I, guess. I can't really tell. Them. I didn't see enough. Kind of see in through here. There's a, there's jugs sitting all along. Looks like a fireplace mantle and this table. With the windows open here, the ones with the windows closed when it's strange you can't see in. You can't see through there. That one with the window open, the one you can see through. This was the schoolhouse. Oh, this was a schoolhouse, huh? This was the original house with his block. So, a bunch of historians, our guests, uh, one time came out and they took brick by brick off of the house. And made sure that. This is the Sandstone Ranch. And it was later renamed Spring Mountain Ranch because this is the original homestead on the property. It was only the third Anglo American outpost in the Las Vegas area. Before the arrival of Railroad in 1905, this ranch served as the grocery store for the miners who delved for gold, silver, and lead in the mountains around the then remote Las Vegas Valley. Five springs in the mouth of Sandstone Canyon flowed down open irrigation ditches to water a fruit orchard, grape vines provided raisins and wine, and fields of hay and grain provided fodder for beef cattle and for people. The fig tree and grape arbor before you are the remnants of days when pioneers brought forth sweet fruits from the dust of the desert, which are right here. All right, branch is open. Let's go check it out. What's now today the man main ranch? This guy, he's welcoming you to the ranch. He's excited we're here. Tie your horse to that. Yeah. Tie your horse right here. Look at those lights. Those are cool. Those are probably gas too. The west wing upstairs bedrooms beyond the loft. At the top of the stairs are two bedrooms with a bath in between. 
These rooms make up the west wing second floor of the original residence built by Chet Locke. Their decor have remained generally unchanged since these early photographs. There's a rope across that, so I don't think that we're able to go upstairs. Take your pick a hat. Which one do you want to wear today? This is Buster. He helped build the main ranch in 1948, did much of the stonework. This was Buster and Boone Wilson in 1916. They were the sons of George, George T. Weed Wilson. Here's the Sandstone Ranch in 1898. James Jim Jr. and George T. Weed in front of the original Sandstone Cabin. Child say the far left is Willard George who purchased the ranch in 1929. Here's who all's owned the ranch throughout time. You can see there Howard Hughes owned it from 1967 to 1972. Here was Willard George's home in 1961. A guest house built by Vera Krupp replaced the original George home and now serves as a park ranger office. Oh, so the park ranger office was their home. And here's the information on Howard Hughes. Says the ranch was purchased by Howard Hughes for his wife, actress Jean Peters, who did not want to live in Las Vegas, did not want to live in a Las Vegas hotel. Spring Mountain Ranch, which Howard said was great, continued as a working ranch under Hughes. Tea, as well as a retreat and host to celebrity parties. There's his aviation stuff. There's his wife, Jean Peters. And here is Vera Krupp, who owned the ranch at one time. She often rode with the cowboys while tending to the cattle, it says. She was a German movie actress who emigrated to the U.S. in 1938. Look at that sink. I bet that was fancy back in the time. This says it was Vera Krupp's Diamond V bath towels.
and here's the shower. See if we can see inside the shower. Tile shower. Look at that light in there. Oh, looks like they had a pool at one time. See that? Or maybe even still do. I haven't been out the backside. I doubt it's still there. Look at that. It's cool. Check out this clock too. Love that clock. Almost looks like in this picture here, they're in the Blackstone shop right here. Yeah, because there's that anvil. You are listening to the Lum and Abner radio show. I wonder what this thing is. It's a coal show. Coal shuttle? Yeah, they used to bring coal in it. They have magazines in it. Oh. Back in the day, you would fill that full of coal and then you could just dump it in. Oh. I think probably Look at the hot. color rate in the, the bricks. It's all used brick that they salvaged from someplace. Oh, don't wake this cat. He gets really upset when you disturb his nap time. It's the gun rack. Chet Locke built a gun rack insert next to the fireplace to display the shotguns he and his guests used to shoot trap and skeet sporting clays in what is now the Ash Grove Trail. During Vera Krupp's ownership, she continued to display shotguns and rifles. She was a special deputy for the Clark County Sheriff's Office, now the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police, and was regularly seen wearing a revolver handgun while she worked the cattle on the ranch. It's like they uh, typically have a gift shop in here, but again, probably due to staffing, I don't have anybody to run it right now. Chester Locks Bar Nothing Ranch. Chester Chet Lock was an accomplished equestrian showman. He and Don Amechi, a fellow radio and screen actor, 
owned the Ellen A. Stable and successfully raised fine thoroughbreds. When Mr. Locke purchased this ranch, he painted the fencing rails and post tops red to match his racing skills. The parade saddle and all the associated bull and leather dress wear was generously donated by Chet and Harriet Locke's granddaughter, Amanda Locke Glickman. Look at this kitchen, the Lock Kitchen. The kitchen of the original Lock House had a copper fronted baking and broiling ovens, a chopping block table, and a hutch. Pine shelves displayed Harriet German's Meisenware porcelain dishes. Pewter and copper cookware completed the decoration. Vera Krupp kept this decor for display but closed off the area with folding doors and added a modern kitchen in the Lock Trophy Room. Hughes removed the folding doors and copper ovens and replaced them with stainless steel. Currently, looks like the last ones in here were these General Electric. There's in there copper. Kind of a glare on that picture, but kind of see it. See, here's where they fired them from in the copper. Oh. And they were copper. This is where they fired them. Old fire extinguisher. Look at all that copperware. Wow. Oh, I just noticed that there's a gun up there. 12 gauge double barrel shotgun, 1880, loaded with bird shot for hunting, small game. Loaded with a buckshot as a close range defensive weapon. This old muffin pan. Whoa, that is heavy. Must be cast iron or something. Corn muffins? Another old fire extinguisher. More copper containers there. Oh, a scale. Can't open those anymore. Westinghouse refrigerator. And a General Electric dishwasher Look at 
the light up there. Spring Mountain Ranch. The original sandstone house is open to the public and now serves as the park office in Florida. It's like a seating area, bay window over there. You can pick where you want to see, apparently. But you can see the blocked off stuff. It's like this was maybe the main bedroom. Oh, there's a cat on that bed too. Don't disturb it either, it's sleeping. It's like there's a wardrobe. Right over there. Somebody's. Maybe you can see it better through this window. Oh, and there's an old radio right there. See it? Look at the view out the back of this house. Pretty cool. Not sure what these flowers are right here. There's the cows. They're like, give me the shade. It's 106 degrees out. Mary, I think that pool was out here. That pool we saw in the pictures, I bet was out here where this tree and stuff is now. Probably where that pool was. There's a bell up there to ring when dinner is ready. Yeah. Well, that's the Spring Mountain Ranch. This gift shop just opened up and I found out this was the sunroom. And it went out to the pool. Originally it wasn't closed in, it was a porch until Vera made it a sunroom. Thanks for riding along with us today and we'll see you on our next adventure.